Welcome, Rexdale family, and those joining us on this special day, Father's Day. We invite you to uh, come into this time of worship, to join us, um, and to leave uh, any baggage that you might be feeling about this day uh, by the wayside. Uh, for those of you who know Jesus, you can just put it at his feet. Um, we, we come to this day from different places, um, some of us knowing our fathers, uh, some of us uh, choosing our fathers, and many of us looking to our Heavenly Father um, for that role in our lives. As, uh, as my first uh, Father's Day uh, with my baby out in the world, um, it's, uh, it's very special for me. Uh, especially with another one on the way. And uh, I think to all those who are looking for that heavenly uh, father figure, that um, divine authority, um, to just come and settle in this place, wherever you are, whenever you are, and to worship. May you be blessed uh, by what we're about to sing, and may you remember uh, that you are loved. Let's sing together. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, and I've heard the tender.
This morning's scripture comes from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 29 to 31. Listen to the words. Then I said to you, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God, who is going before you, will fight for you as he did in Egypt, before your very eyes, and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a father carries his son, all the way you went until you reached this place. I think one of the most beautiful things about this scripture is the image of a father carrying his son or daughter in this case. We are all in different positions where, as, as Dan mentioned earlier, we may know our fathers, we may not know our fathers, um, but this is a, a really special reminder that we are always carried by our Heavenly Father.
as I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now, I'm laying it down, and I know I need you now. I run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, oh. You saw my condition, had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. My 
heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Hello, RAC family. It's such a delight to worship with you this morning, even from behind the screens and in the comfort of your own home, cottage, or someone else's place. Welcome. My name is Solange, and I am on staff here working with the kids and all who consider themselves kids. Today is a special day as we celebrate Father's Day. For some, it's dad, it's papa, it's papa, vader, appa, dada, name it. For me, it is my papi. Next week, June the 25th, counts exactly two years that my papi had passed on. At the beginning, his absence would trigger many emotions when I think of him. Sadness, loss, to name some. But as days went by and I prayed that God would erase these emotions, I began to ponder those wonderful memories and savor each of them as I think when Papi was here on earth with us. I asked myself the question many times, what is it that I miss most about my Papi? Well, I could say his fearless approach to life, his protective embrace for us, his strength, his compassionate heart, and impeccable love for those he loved so dearly. He is my hero. Papi is no longer with us, but it is the memories that will live forever and vividly linger on every day of my life. And it is because I chose to remember Papi in this way. Within our family, Papi is always in our conversations and we share about him, imitate him, or use some of his famous words like, strong like a lion. Let me just share two summer memories of my poppy. My poppy had green thumbs for plants and trees. He was persistent and innovative in his character. When we moved to this house in 2015, in the front of the house, there was this rotten city plant tree with black bark and it was stagnant in growth. My neighbor always reminded me how Papi used to come by literally scrubbing the tree with pure soap water for days. Today, you could hardly see the house behind this monstrosity of a tree. The second one was Papi's abundant love and powerful character. A rose bush who Papi had planted at my sister's house many years ago became increasingly out of control and needed to be removed. Attempts to destroy this rose failed. We uprooted it, we burned it to the root, put gasoline in it, name it. Everyone gave up. Poppy's rose bush just refused to disappear and kept growing in size and strength each summer. These were great memories, but an even greater reminder of the love of our Heavenly Father and his persistent and abundant love for us. He loves us unconditionally, cares for us, and longs to be part of our daily memories as we seek to be in his presence. If you are joining us today and have any doubt about the love of your Heavenly Father, let me assure you that he loves you. So on behalf of a family ministry, I would love you to join us in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Amen. Abba Father, we give you praise and we give you honor. You have called us your children, your loved ones, Lord. We acknowledge and we declare you as Lord, as our savior, our provider, our shepherd, and our everything. This morning, we want to enter into your presence with love for you and for one another. Refocus our minds and our hearts to be attentive to what you intend to show us today through the words of the songs, the sermon, and the entire service. And as we approach the throne of grace, tune our hearts to your voice, to your loving, compassionate, and convincing voice. We pray for our country, Canada, and the many issues and authorities are currently facing with abuse, with a pandemic, only to mention a few. Help them, Lord, as they navigate through these difficult issues and then just the decisions which can impact many in the future. We pray for those who, because of these wrongful acts, have suffered with pain, loss, and hurt. Would you be their embrace and their comfort? We pray for those amongst us who are experiencing health issues of their own or their loved ones, that they may experience your peace and they may find rest in you. God knows who you are by name. We pray for our churches as restrictions are being lifted in the coming months. Grant wisdom to the leaders and understanding to God's people. Abba Father, here we come with open palms, ready to receive and take away what Pastor Milat will share from your word and on this Father's Day and this glorious day. We promise to receive and apply it with the help of the living spirit who lives in and through us. And we pray all this in the sweetest name of Jesus, amen. there for me he's always caring for me and even when he's working the hardest on whatever he's doing and has everything on his plate he'll always come and help me whatever it is he's special because we share a lot of things together and he likes to relate with us um we read the bible together and we always pray he's awesome i love him because he is so much caring to me and that he's so kind to me he looks Dad teaches me about Jesus because at night time when we pray, we read the Bible. He's really awesome and fun. My dad is special because he teaches me about God and he's really honest to me. Daddy, um, I like how we do activities together and that we do games. And I also like how whenever things are wrong, like we try to help and fix it. I just love when we do activities together. Love you. Happy Father's Day. I love you guys. Bye, everybody. Today is the Father's Day. 
So happy Father's Day. As you may know that I came from Egypt. And in Egypt, we do not celebrate Father's Day. That's why I'm happy in Canada. We celebrate Mother's Day, Child Day, Family Day, but not Father's Day. So I'm happy that in Canada we celebrate Father's Day. Happy Father's Day again to every one of you. Before we go forward, just in the chat box, write where are you coming from? And do you celebrate Father's Day back home? Just write to your country and yes or no. I'll wait for a few seconds to do this. You may be a single mother or a single man or a single woman that you think this message today is not for you because it's about father. No, actually it is for you. And it's exactly for every one of us. You know why? Because it's about what God is looking to see in us as his children in this earth. And also some tips for the earthly father too. I am sorry if you lost your father recently. I lost my father over 20 years ago. I still remember every word that he used to tell me and he used to guide me and every situation I had with my father. I know it's a wonderful, wonderful memory to remember. But I don't know your experience with your earthly father. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. I don't know what memory Father's Day will bring to you. But this message today is for you to be a godly person, to be a godly father, to be a godly mother, to be a godly single man, a godly single woman, to every one of us. By the way, I am not a perfect father. We, as fathers, we are not perfect fathers. But our aim, we must be godly fathers. There is only when God, God as our father is perfect. He's the only perfect father, our heavenly father. That's why I would like to start to encourage you to think about your relationship with your heavenly father. God is your father. He created you. He loves you. And we learn it through by Jesus when his disciple asked him, teach us how to pray. He told them, I will teach you to pray starting by our father in heaven. How would be your name? So God is our father. How can you enjoy your relationship with God as your father? We become loved and accepted as a child through our faith in Jesus. Listen what the Gospel of John tells us in chapter 1 and verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I would like to highlight three words in this verse. First, who did receive. So to become a child of God, you have to receive, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And there is a lot of different between just receiving Jesus as your savior, but he should be your Lord too. He's the one that he loves you. How can you do this? By believing, put your trust, all your trust in Jesus. What do you, you will have after? You will have what John is right here. He's writing about that you will have right to become a child of God. Some other translation, like Arabic translation, uh, used for the word right, authority, that you will have the right or the authority to become a child of God. 
Can you imagine? You know what does this mean? It means exactly that you have your heavenly father, you have Jesus as your older brother, and you will have a family from brothers and sisters. This is what we call the church. That's the, the rights that you will be a child of God. The other thing that you will, you will have when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and become a child of God, that you will have access to your Father, Heavenly Father, with no, no think about how you look like. You just come as you are. You come with everything that you have. Do you remember the story in Luke 15 about the prodigal son? He came to his father as he is, and the father hugged him and took him to his house. No matter what he did with his father's inheritance, no matter what he did with his father's name, but he came back and welcomed back. Come as you are, Jesus is accepting you, and you will become a child of God. Romans 8, 15 is telling us that this is, will happen by God's adoption to us. God adopted us to be his sons. And that's give us also that we can cry, we can shout, we can call our father, Abba, Father. You know what does mean Abba? It means Daddy. It means Baba. That's mean a close friend, Dad, to you. And when you have God the Father is your Abba, you can come to him, talk to him, any time with all what you have without thinking about how he's going to see you because he sees you as his child. Sometimes when I'm, I'm busy and uh, in, in, uh, in the uh, room or in the office preparing something and then Sam and Ruben likes to come to, to talk to me and they just come in without appointment, without any arrangement before, because they are my children. They don't need to make an appointment to see me. That's the relationship with our Father. Come as you are. But before we go forward, I would like to share with you a story. I heard it from Dr. Meher Samuel, and he's one of the uh, great preachers and psychiatric in the Middle East and in Egypt. He shared this story. I will call the two fathers in the story, father number one and father number two. And I would like to ask you, what kind of father would you like to have? Which one, number one or number two? Father number one, he has a son. And he bought for, bought for him a wonderful, expensive car. You can see Tesla, Lamborghini, whatever from the top line cars that he gave to his son. The son started to drive carelessly. He doesn't care about the load, doesn't care about the red light. He just drove it as a young man, very crazy driver. He had an accident. What did he do? He called his dad, Daddy, I had an accident. He said, son, don't worry, just wait. A few minutes later, his dad sent to him four big bodyguards with a new car. They gave him the newer car. The son carried on as nothing had happened. And then the four bodyguards took care of the accident with the insurance, with the police, with the other part in the accident. Well, maybe you would love to have your heavenly father or earthly father like this father. You like, when you have any trouble, he sent the four big bodyguards to take care of everything. Well, you can call them an angels, you can call them whatever, 
but let me tell you about the second father. Father number two. He had a wonderful girl. He bought for her a car, an okay car, decent car, and she was a wonderful girl. She drove it very carefully. She was very uh, decent driver. She didn't do a lot of crazy driving, but unfortunately she had an accident. And she called her father, Daddy, I had an accident. And what her father told her, my daughter, you take care of what happened. You are responsible. Call the police, talk to the insurance, talk to the other part in the accident you deal with. She said, what? Are you, you're not coming? He said, no. So she started to take care of the situation. The, everything with the details of the accident, the police came and the, the police told her and the other part of the accident, I, I would like to take you to, to the police station. We have to finish there. She went there, she saw a lot of things that she would never think that she would see it in her life, but it happened. She dealt with everything. She finished in the police station and she just finished, get out of the door of the police station and she saw her dad waiting outside of the door. And she told him, finally you come? He said, my dear daughter, I was following you since you called and kept my eyes on you and I was ready to help you if you need it. Which father you like to have? Use the chat box again and write number one or number two. Just, just numbers, one or two. Father number one or father number two. And by the way, which relationship will stay stronger and long? The relationship between the son and the father of the, the, the first story or the, the father and the daughter in the second story? Let me tell you some lessons from each story. Father number one. The boy in this story will repeat the same mistakes because he knows his father spoiled him and he will take care of everything without any work from the son. The second lesson, the boy will not learn to take responsibility of his actions. Sam, my son, celebrated his um, 16th birthday a few weeks ago. And I told him, my son, three things I would love to tell you on your 16th birthday. You are a young man now. So you are responsible about your words, your actions, and your reactions. So be careful. You're a young man now. The third lesson that we need to learn from this story, that's how we can raise our children in a godly way, not just to spoil them by providing to them whatever they need. Father number two, in this story, he did not forsake his daughter at all. He kept his eyes on her all the time. What a wonderful father. I would love to have father number two. He helped her to build her character by letting her handle the situation. And next time, this girl, will learn to be more careful from this situation to the next one. John writes also in the uh, first letter, chapter three, verse one. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, what we should be called the children of God, and so we are. 
The reason why the world does not know us is that it didn't know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. Yes, we are God's children. Some statistics show if the father only, the earthly father only, come and attend the church, which is we're hoping uh, will be after the lockdown, if he attend the church by himself only with his children, 66 of the children will attend the church and they will look for having a relationship with God. But if the both parents, the father and the mother attend the church, 75% of the children will be regular attending and they will, they will be looking to have a relationship with God. I encourage you both to attend the church together with your children, if it's possible. I know there is some cases, maybe it's not. Maybe the father is not there. That's why I would like to encourage you as a child and maybe to your children, if you don't have your fathers now for any reason, Psalm 68 verse 5, our heavenly father is the father for the fatherless, father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy, holy habit. This is our God. He's the father for the fatherless. So you have a father. Enjoy his relationship as a father and you are his child. How does our heavenly father treat us? He's actually telling us every day, I love you unconditionally. He also showed his love practically to us, the unconditional love, the agape love, with no condition, I love you, come as you are. And he sent Jesus to die for us in the cross to tell us that I love you. And I will forgive you too. And I will accept you, no matter what's your situation now. And also, our Heavenly Father does not like to see you, you are struggling, but He likes to see you stronger. He loves to have you as His child now and forever. That's our Heavenly Father. He's the perfect Father. He's the one that we can learn from Him. So that's why I would like to encourage each one of us, starting with myself as a father, how can we learn from the Heavenly Father the lesson that we can raise our children in a godly mother and also being uh, a godly father. Deuteronomy 6, you know the Shema. The Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. I believe we heard a lot of sermons and a lot of teaching about this text. But I would like to highlight a few words. You as a godly father need to know and need to do it. First, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. And don't forget this is a command from God. Today, you shall be, keep God's commandment on you, on your heart. The second thing that we need to do to raise our kids or to live a godly father, and that's why I'm, I'm trying to tell myself, is God want me to be a perfect father or a godly father? So the godly father in Deuteronomy 6 telling them, Hear my people, I want you to do this, to be a godly father. You shall teach God's commandment to your children. When? How? When you talk, when you walk, 
when you sit, when you lay down, when you rise, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and you shall put them also on your doors. Write them in your doorposts and in your house gates. Exactly keep God's commandment in every aspect of your daily life. Talk them to your kids. Use every opportunity to do this. What a godly father must do. I will share with you some of my experience as a father. I'm not perfect, as I said, but I'm trying to live a godly father's life. Be an example to your children. I remember Sam and Reuben, while they were young, they are not young now, they are taller than me, but while they were, they were little kids, when I, I was standing to share, they just come next to me, have a, a little a chair, and then they try to do like what I'm doing. Why? Well, they love daddy and they love to do what daddy's doing. That's why use every opportunity to model your God like a father behavior with your children. Don't miss any opportunity. The other thing is, a godly father is not always a perfect father. What do I mean? I keep repeating that you are not perfect father. Me too. But let's aim to live a godly father life. Humble yourself, my friend. Apologize to your kids and to your wife for sure. Yes. And if you did something wrong, just admit it. Ask for forgiveness. But just to remind you, when you ask for forgiveness and you apologize, just don't come and just throw the word sorry and run away. Sorry. No. When you say sorry, you mean that you are sorry. That's the, the true apologize. That's how your children will learn from you. A godly father also worship the Lord with his family. Joshua 24, 15 is teaching us the wonderful situation with Joshua. He's telling his people, okay, choose whatever God or, or one of the gods with a small g that you like to worship, you like to serve, you like to follow. Here, there, everywhere, your father's gods, but... As for me and my house, we will serve or worship the Lord. That's what Joshua chose for, for, chose for his family. It chose to worship the Lord with your family. It's an easy, I wish. No, it's not an easy. Let me share with you some challenges. That's to live a godly life. As a father, it's not an easy. What the challenges that you are going to face or you are facing now? Do not forget that the children are God's gift to you. It's not your children. It's God give you a gift in your children. So don't forget this. Hebrew 2, 13 is telling us this principle. Also, you need to use wise Parental authority as needed, as needed. So you need to be the father and the parents with the mother, not the children are the parents. There is a lot of situation I can share with you, but we don't have time to, to too many. But I saw a lot, a lot of thinking that the, the kids try to control the parents. You are the parents. Use the authority if you need it. Do not play absent father. Even while you live 
in the home. Please, if you are with your children, try. I am asking you to try, and I'm keep trying to, to not get busy with your work or with the social media. It's a lot of distraction to distract the relationship with our children. They will come to ask you a lot of things every day, every day. And sometimes you have to say no. Do you hear me? You have to say no, but a change your no with a big yes. No for this, but yes for this. No for a digital games all the time, all the day. But yes, for a board game, for biking, for walking. Be creative with your kids. The other challenge that I'm, I'm challenging myself, go to their world. Get into their, their, their world nowadays. Be a good companion to them. And also, you will not know all the answers to all of their questions. They will ask you a tons of questions. Do you know the answer of all? No. What are you going to do? Ask Google. Don't be shy to do this. There is a website, it say, got questions. Just type your question in this website. You'll find some help. Ask another parents in the church. My kids ask me this question, what can I do? You will not have the answer for all the question, but maybe you have some and ask for help. Spending a quality time with them, not a quantity, quality time. I know you're busy, the kids are busy, so try to find the quality time with them. Don't expect your children will be open up and share everything they have to you. No, especially if they are teenagers. Ask them questions. Ask their help. Let them know that you don't know all things. Guys, I don't know the answer for this. Can you help me? Especially with technology. They know technology better than us. Yes. Let me tell you a significant thing about this generation. Our kids' generation, they have the information. They don't need you to tell them a lecture about information about anything. They have it. It's an easy access in the internet now. It's very easy. But what they are missing, that's what you need to fill in. They're missing the experience. You need to fill in. Another thing I would love to share with you, fatherhood is not just because of biological relationship. I would love to share with you about the spiritual father. Even though you may not have a biological ch children, you may have a spiritual parenting influence on others. That's what we call in the church mentoring coaching, helping, but still, it's a wonderful thing that we need to do in our spiritual journey. Our younger generation in the church, they need you as an older generation. So we need the intergeneration together to help our church to, to achieve our mission and our vision. At the same time, there is a lot of Biblical example for this. I will share with you a few from the New Testament, a few from the Old Testament. The wonderful example for this you will see is Paul and Timothy and Titus. Okay, so when Paul is writing to 1 Corinthians in chapter 4, uh, verse 14 and after, he's telling them, you are my beloved children. Paul didn't have them as a biological father but he's calling them, you are my beloved children. I, for I became your father in Christ, just through the gospel. I argue you 
then be imitator of me as I am also imitate of Christ. Be, just follow me as I follow Christ. The other good thing that he called Timothy, that's I will send you, Timothy, my beloved and the faithful a child. So Paul has Timothy and Titus, and maybe you have others too. But please, when you do the spiritual parenting, the spiritual father, please be careful. Not just do it, and we have to be very careful nowadays how we can do this in a safe environment. In the Old Testament, read about Naomi and Ruth. Read about Elijah and Elisha. Read about Moses and Joshua. Read about John and Gaius in the, in the New Testament. Read about Peter and John Mark. I will conclude with some practical tips for you as a child and for you as a father. If you are a child, I would like to encourage you to know what are your father's needs. First thing, honor your father and for sure your mother too. Honor your parents as the Bible command us in Ephesians 6. Respect, honor and respect, but respect your father as the leader of the family. Second, you have to understand that your parents as a child, your parents are doing their best to raise you. Show your appreciation to your father, especially today in the Father's Day, sending a card. If he's not close to you, if he's close to you now, give him a hug, take to him, email him, just be close to him. But if you are a father, I would like also to encourage you to think about your, bear, your children's needs. Each of your child is unique. So respond suitably to each one. Also, love plus time equal relationship. I know you love your children 100%, but give them time. Then you will have relationship with them. Leave for your children a legacy that they will be proud of you. My friends, It's what you leave in your children, not what you leave for your children. It's what you leave in them, not for them. Read the Bible for them while they are young and with them while they are older. Help them to understand and deal with the challenges that they they are facing nowadays. Tell them about the false gods that they have around them. There is a lot today. The God of money, the God of sex, the God of fame, the God of social media, and some of the younger generation, they look for their identity in the social media. And if you want to know more uh, about identity, please check Pastor TJ's sermons about who am I. It's a wonderful series to know your identity in Christ, not from anything else. Last thing, and it's very challenging, discipline your children out of love. Discipline is very important. Ephesians 6, 4, that's telling us, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruct an instruction of the Lord. You need to discipline them, but out of love. A godly father also pray for his children and with his children. When you pray as a father, you pray to your heavenly father asking for his help. And also pray that God will guide you to another good father to help you to raise your children. Maybe you ask the church. Maybe we would love to help you if you have anything that we can help you with. 
Therefore, my friends, as the Selenia 517 saying, therefore, out of your love, please pray for your children without seasoning. All the time they need your help. Even after they get married, yes. After they leave home, yes, they need your prayer and your help. If you need wisdom with discipline your children, ask. He promised us, if any one of you lack wisdom, James 5, James 1, 5, let him ask who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. God will give you what you need. Let me summarize very quick conclusion of what the basics job description for us as earthly father. Teach your kids. Teach them God's word. Teach them the value of life to live for a purpose for God and for his kingdom. Live out what you teach, not just teaching them, but live out what you teach. Correct your children when they are wrong. Do everything out of love. Pray, pray without seasoning for your children. My friends, the world around us needs godly fathers, and your children need you to be one of them. That's my prayer for you. And I pray that God will give us wisdom to raise our children in his way. I have a few questions for discussion. You can discuss it with your kids, with your live group. Use them as you like. You'll see them in the screen. So please uh, uh, use them as you like. Also, I would love to pray for you now. Father, I thank you that you are a wonderful and great example for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to introduce our Heavenly Father to us. And you take us back to introduce us as his children. Thank you for adopting us to be with your family. And we thank you for our church family, that we can come around each one of us. Give us, Lord, to celebrate and be joyful in this Father's Day and know that you are the great Father and you'll help us to be a godly father and a godly mother, a godly parent, a godly spiritual father for our children and younger generation. We thank you for your help. In Jesus' name. My benediction for you today is come from Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. My friends, again, be a godly father. You will raise godly children. God bless you and Happy Father's Day.